Hi. I must say I'm really, really inspired today. <laughs> Such amazing, such beautiful stories. Uh, today I want to talk to you a little bit about standing up for my convictions. And I want to start off with a, just a little personal story. Um, my brother Shamiz is just standing, sitting over there. Uh, he's going to share his story in more detail later on in, in the conference. But I want to say seven years ago, Shamiz was diagnosed with a incurable medical condition called ulcerative colitis. He's meant to be on medication for the rest of his life, but he has not taken a pill for seven years. And I want to share with you uh, some information that we have learned over the last seven years as to how the power of nutrition can help with the body's healing powers. So I'm going to be sharing with you. Uh, Let me place this thing to the side. Just change the size. Yeah. Apologies. So, what we found seven years ago was that we made a shift to what we call a whole food plant based diet. And the information I'm going to share with you is so powerful that it's been scientifically proven to reverse heart disease and diabetes and even some form of cancer. And so I don't have time to go through everything, so I'm just going to touch on a few basics. I'm going to talk about some of the main myths that we hear today in society, the main ones being protein and calcium. I'll touch on a few other important nutrients as well, but if we can go to the next slide. Next slide. The biggest myth we are told today by industry is that we need to get certain nutrients from animal foods such as protein and calcium. But have we ever asked ourselves the question, where do the animals get the nutrients from? Okay. We say we need to get calcium from cow's milk, but the cow doesn't drink the milk once it's weaned. Okay. They say we need to get iron from red meat, especially in many of the Western countries. And I see that over the last few years. I mean, I came to present in India in 2016, I believe. And over the last few years, there's a greater incidence of Western influence in the nutrition. Okay. Uh, when I was, when I, I was born in Mumbai, and in 94, I moved to New Zealand. At that time, there was very little influence. You couldn't find Coca-Cola in India. You couldn't find McDonald's in India. You couldn't find KFC. Nowadays, everything has more and more of this fast food. You know, more cheese on everything, more fat, more processed food. But what I want to say to you is think past the middle animal, okay? And we go directly to the source of nutrition, which is the soil and the plants. So I get this question all the time because when people find out that I don't eat meat, dairy, eggs, fish anymore, I used to eat this for the first 27 years of my life. Where do you get your protein from? Okay, next slide. There's a lot of things we don't understand about protein. Does anyone know how much protein they need? Most people don't know have the answer to this question. Okay, pardon? 30% of your calories? That's a reasonably good answer, but uh, I'll get to that in a second. Okay, it's about 30 to 40, 40 to 60 grams a day, and the reason is that the body recycles between 100 and 300 grams of protein just through its own metabolic processes. Okay, next slide. 
So research has shown that we need only about 20 to 30 grams a day. And then the World Health Organization looked at that and said, that's about 5% of total calories. Okay, about the same in mother's milk, actually, the human breast milk, 5% of total calories. Okay. I've got a small two and a half year old daughter and she was breastfed, she's still being breastfed. Uh, and I s have seen her grow from this small, you know, to now running around. And breast milk, human breast milk has 5% of calories and protein. If you can do all of that growing on 5% protein, why do you ever need any more than that? So, one more. Can we go back, please? Too far. Go back, please. Wrong way. Back. Back. Thank you. So, protein requirements are very low, which is exactly the opposite of what we're told because everyone loves to sell you things that have protein in them. But... So the World Health Organization doubled this 5% recommendation to 10%. This is where we get 40 to 60 grams from. It's only about 10% of calories, not a lot. Okay, and too much is not a good idea. Obviously, too little is not just the right amount. Next slide. So interestingly about proteins, okay, even this 10%, which is double what we need, is easily met by any single grain, legume, or starchy vegetable. Potatoes, rice, beans. Even fruit has every single essential amino acid that we need. Every plant food has every single essential amino acid that we need. Okay. Who knows someone with protein deficiency? <laughs> no. Nope. The hospitals are full of people with heart disease, cancer, diabetes. Not a single one with protein deficiency. Yet all we are concerned about is how much protein we are going to get. And no one is deficient. Okay, next. So calcium, we'll quickly skip through calcium. Next slide. So calcium requirements, again, no one really knows how much you need, right? The science shows that between 150 to 200 milligrams a day. Okay. In the Western world, where there's a lot of do lobbying from the dairy industry, they have recommendations of 1,000 a day. Okay, but that's not scientific. That's not what we actually need. If you can get between 300 and 500 milligrams a day, and all of my clients who want a plant-based diet are bang in the middle of this number. Some of them a lot more. Okay, 300 to 500 milligrams. But the interesting thing, if you go to the next slide, is that we get told that calcium builds strong bones. Okay, is this true? Now, this is a f uh, graph that shows fractures uh, against calcium intake. And as we see, okay, the more calcium we have in our diet, the higher the rates of hip fractures. So they're exactly the opposite to this. The less that we have in our diet. So we don't need to be drinking three or four or five glasses of milk to make our bones strong because the evidence shows the op opposite of that. Next slide. So there is no actual disease associated with calcium deficiency. Does anybody know someone who's calcium deficient? Yeah. So much concern about the nutrient that is so easy to get. But thanks to marketing, we are all worried about it. Protein and calcium. So just quickly before I finish, this is my last slide. I want to show you with you the reason, and this convinced me because I used to be a very big eater of animal foods, meat, dairy, cheese. This convinced me that I didn't need these anymore in my diet. Okay. How many people know someone on cholesterol lowering, ma lowering medication? How many people know someone on cholesterol lowering medication or statins? Yes? No? There's Sorry, cholesterol lowering medication. Do you know somebody on that? Yes, everybody know, should know someone because it's the most widely prescribed medication in the world. Okay, the only way you can get none of that in your diet is to eat a plant-based diet because plants have no cholesterol. So why are we taking pills to reduce our cholesterol when we can just to change our diet and not have it? Okay, our body makes everything that we need. Okay, fat. Okay. There's a weight loss diet out there for everybody nowadays, okay? Animal-based foods. Let me just quickly preface this. This is 500 calories, equal parts of tomatoes, spinach, lima beans, peas, and potatoes. And the animal-based foods is equal parts of beef, pork, chicken, and whole milk. 
Okay. 36 grams of fat for those 500 calories compared to four. Compared to four. Protein, 33 grams to 34, exactly the same. Okay. And then you've got other nutrients, beta carotene, calcium, double the calcium in the plant foods. Okay, iron, 10 times the amount of iron in the plant foods. And fiber, which is only found in plant foods. In the Western world, 97% of people are deficient in fiber. Yet everybody's talking about protein and calcium. <laughs> okay, so this, every single column, there's actually not a single one where I would prefer to use an animal-based food. So seven years ago, we changed. Shamiz healed his body. He does not need medication anymore. And in a couple of weeks, he's about to run a half marathon. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, you'd like a printout? If I get your email address, I'll send it to you. Yes, you're right. It's not true. Uh, you can get big. You can get big and strong just by working on your muscles. The protein powder actually affects you. There's lots of links to cancer on the way protein. It's not very good. So. As you burn your calories, you need the same protein. By eating more. <laughs> eating more is very simple. You know, if, if you're exercising, you will automatically have an increased level of hunger. So somebody who's sedentary can be sitting and working in the office, going home, you know, doing small amounts of exercise. Somewhere around 2,000 calories a day will suffice. Someone who's actually trying to build and they're doing lots of, you know, five, six times a day in the gym, they will be somewhere around 3,000, 4,000 calories, one and a half to two times as much protein as a sedentary person, just like that. Can you just elaborate on what was it semi-cooked? Was it uh, raw? Was it cooked? Uh, the plant? When we changed. The, yeah, when you changed. It was a com combination of uh, fruit and uh, foods. Okay. So a lot of raw foods, but also a lot of um, steamed vegetables. Okay. Um, but not not high in. He had a digestive issue. Okay. So he wasn't able to digest a lot. So I'm going to talk to you about this in the military. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah. I just want to and we can, you can come and talk to us about it sure. later, but it's basically mostly like soft foods like bananas, potatoes, sweet potatoes, um, eggplant, and juicing as well. Yes. Yeah, then it's okay. Just wanted to ask whether your philosophy is the same that they have at the effect the free from diabetes.